Hello everybody and welcome to this interior design specific tutorial, how to model bifold doors in Shaper 3D the easy way. In this process specific lecture, I will show you how I set up all the sketches for the bifold doors inside an architectural opening. And what is really going to be interesting in what I will show you is how these sketches can auto adjust very easily, for example, with height and everything. And then we will also take a look at how we could use folders for posing the bifold doors into an open and closed stage, which will be very useful when, for example, we would like to meet with a client and talk about the visual look but also questions about accessibility of the space behind it. Okay, this file is going to be shared with you so you can download it. It's all preset. We are in inches and we have all our snapping tools turned on. I just turned off the baseboard folder. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sketches we have. And there we are. So the sketches are, or the sketch is on a construction plane, as you can see. So how did I create this construction plane? You see it's also a little bit inside the wall. To create a construction plane, you can simply select the face and then go to Add Plane. It uses the Offset command and then you simply offset this plane into the wall as needed. And that pretty much is it. The um, reason why we want to create this construction plane being a little bit inside the wall is, well, that is where the doors actually will later be positioned. So it makes more sense on that position to start the sketching. Let me hide this architecture model one more time. So here you can clearly see are the four profiles for the bifold doors. But then there are also some lines around it. Where are these lines coming from? These are actually projected from the opening of my wall. So to do this, we can simply select these lines, then select the construction plane, and then in the tool area, simply select project. Let's hide this one more time. And there we are. These lines basically are now inside my sketch, a reference to where I would like to align my bifold doors to. It cannot go to the left or to the right. The bifold doors should be in the inside. Obviously, these lines I do not want to move at all. So I will select them and click lock. Now with the pencil, I can select this construction plane, and then with my finger double tap. So I go right into an orthographic view onto that sketch. And now we can go ahead and create our drawings. I will turn off the auto constraint and actually do the constraints more manually so I can work a little bit more cleaner. And I will start by simply making a few lines this way one more time. I make this one bigger and I make this one bigger and I make this at an angle. So I can show you how amazing the constraint system in this case here will work. So obviously all these lines should be horizontal. So I select the horizontal constraint. All these lines should be vertical. So I select the vertical constraint. I could give this line now a dimension, but in the end, I would like all these lines to be exactly the same. So I can select them all and then say equal. And you see actually the equal constraint scaled them all together. If I select this point and move it, you see how everything adjusts. How beautiful is that? Here inside this reference, we see this element should be 11.75 inches. 
Okay, so let's type in 10. So it's a little bit smaller. I do this on purpose. Very good. If I now select this point and move this left and right, you see the whole thing actually moves. How can I now actually position these four rectangles of my um, my sketch perfectly centered? Also, this is very easily solved via some lines. So one line here and one line there. Very good. I move this on purpose a little bit to the left, select this edge, select this longer edge. I don't give any dimension. I simply say be equal. And there. How awesome. If we make this five inches, you see because the left and the right outside line is said to be equal, they are always equal. And the lines for the bifold door are said to be equal. In this way, everything is set perfectly centered. And that really is the great trick to do this. You can see also here in the sketch, the bifold door has a height of 79 inches, and then there is a 1.5 inch to the top. So let's do the top dimension first. So I would like to have from the top 1.5 inches distance. And then we can specify that this should be 79 inches. And there we are. If we set this to 0.5, you see how everything moves up or down. So there's not much measuring or trying to make sure things are centered. The way how we set up the sketches basically takes care of that. Every door um, or the two center doors also want to have a doorknob so we can pull actually this bifold door open. Here in the reference, you see there is a line of uh, 36 inches from the ground up, and then there is a small circle there. So let's draw this line horizontal. And then we can, from here, create a circle. And I will set this to 0 0.5 uh, for the radius. So it's one inch diameter. We only have to do this on the right side. We don't have to do this on each side, simply because I also only have to model two bifold doors and then a mirror copies over because it's symmetrical. So with all this done, I could now select this bifold door and extrude it. I can do the same here too. You see, I selected also the fill for this small um, the ring. So my two objects are basically done. And now I can select this and extrude this one out maybe by half of a cent um, half of an inch and I would like this to be a new body so it's a new object very good and this is kind of like just a base to start I select this face one more time and I go to extrude extrude this one out two inches and then I can give this a draft and there we already have a small Kind of like a knob we could use to um, basically symbolize where on this bifold door is a piece of hardware going to be. I find very often when we don't have a CAD model to import but we have a, a reference photo to show a client then all we need to do is just model something that gets close to the actual uh, object. And then via the photo reference, we can clearly show the client what we are talking about. And the simplicity of the geometry really helps the client to rather think about this design more from a functional and less from an aesthetical standpoint. So this is one way how to quickly make a knob. Let me show you also a second way when you would like to have a knob that's a little bit more organic. 
So right at this center point of this ring there, I would like to have a sketch perpendicular onto it. Well, how do we, how can we do that? So that is the reason also why we have this circle. When I, uh, not circle, sorry, I meant the cylinder. So when we select the outer face of this cylinder, you see that in the toolbar, it gives me the option to add an axis there. And when I select this axis, now I can add a plane perpendicular to the curve. But that is actually not what I want because you see it's perpendicular to it. So let's go back one more time. Let's see, we can go to more, but we don't see it there. So in this case, what we will do, because the software just tried to predict maybe what tool we would like to use, we simply go to add construction plane and then under type select through edge at an angle there. And then we can rotate this as needed. Let's make this horizontal. Very good. Select this plane with the finger double tap. Now we just go right onto it. The axis which we created, we can actually snap to. You see, when I draw a line to it, then it will um, how could you say this? It will project this axis into the sketch. Very good. And now we could draw more elements as we want. For example, here I use a fit point curve, make this a little bit smaller. I will hide this body here so I can bring this over to there, close this, bring this over a little bit more to there. Now I'm starting to sculpt my design a little bit more. These two I would like to be tangent and this one I would like to be vertical. Uh, it does it actually then this way. Okay, let's do it. These two I would like them to be perpendicular. One moment. This is getting a little bit in my way. There, 90 degrees. Very good. Okay. Very nice. So you see, by having then uh, created this profile, I could select it, select the axis, and do a revolve object. So if you, in case you would like then to create a knob this method. And you see it starting from a circle first to create then an axis and then a construction plane. It helps us to perfectly position actually this knob right where we want it to be. Very good. Okay, so I will select all these elements and just delete them because I have all this already created. So here they are. And let's take a look at this area up there. And you see there is a small cylinder sitting on top. So why did I actually put a cylinder to there? There is also a little sketch. Now you see it there. So I will select this object and then extrude this out 1.5. Now if I would like to rotate this bifold door. I can double select or double tap on the base. It helps me then to select the whole object. And now I could move the rotation widget to somewhere here, but I have nothing to snap to. So on this face, I will select it with a finger double tap. I can then draw a line right to this midpoint. This will project this edge into it. Allows me to make this line horizontal, perfectly centered to my right edge. We can give this a dimension and for example, a small circle for the post or it's kind of like an axis. And I will just undo these steps. 
this object I can remove because this is exactly what you see there. And then from the circle, we will rotate a small uh, cylinder up. And this cylinder has a nice round top cap. And that actually will help when we want to rotate everything. So how did I rotate everything? I will work this way. Double tap, double tap, including this knob. Okay, and then the 3D widget here, I move up and go to where the top cap is. And you see how it snaps right to the center. And then we can rotate this 80 degrees. Um, why do I know 80 degrees? Well, this is also because of the baseboard. Obviously, I do not want the door to rotate so it goes beyond or inside the trim. So I said baseboard, I meant trim, obviously. Good, and then we select all this, move the rotation widget kind of like to this back edge, go to a top view, and simply rotate it back as needed. So 160 degrees, because it was 81 side and then this way it goes back. Yeah, and this basically is then the way how I created an, from an, a closed stage, a version that is open. So you see, very, very easy. Now to move those into various um, how could I say that? Groups. Let me show you how we can how we can do that. I will simply select all those and in not including the top one because I would like to be able to select the elements and then remove them so they don't that because I have the top cylinder there already. Normally I would do this, but for this demonstration purpose, I don't. So I have all these objects selected. Now I would like to make a copy, mirror them and get them correctly to the other side. That's actually why I have this object here. That really helps me. So I can go to mirror and then, for example, select this face and mirror it over, let me see. Another way to do this, we will take a look at the sketch, select this line of the sketch. Oh, don't select, go mirror, and then select this line. And you see, onto that sketch line we selected, perpendicular to the plane, it then will calculate a mirror axis or mirror plane and bring this over. Very easy, as you can see. Then we could click OK. And there is now my copy. All those I could select. And when we go down to here, you see move selected to here. So how could we group them together? So I can make a new uh, folder with the plus icon. And you see actually then those objects were automatically moved into that position. Yeah. And then in our case here, we would like to copy this back to there. Okay, there, very good. So in this way, as you can see, I can very easily show open or closed. And that really is um, everything what I wanted to show in this um, workshop. I'd like to show you how beautiful the 
um, the sketches can work when we make smart use of the constraint system, in this case, particularly the equal constraint. So we can rather focus on dimensions and don't really have to deal with making sure the position is correct. And then via the mirroring command and moving objects into folders, we can then very easily show also various stages of open or closed stages, which then could be very beneficial when talking to a client or for ourselves. None of this is also one thing, for example, to keep in mind. Say here we show the open stage. Now this is good. So what's the distance between these two edges here? So uh, 33, 32 inches of a distance. Okay, that's pretty decent. I can easily walk through into the space. So for space planning, space planning purpose, this is very useful. 